Hey everyone, this is Ellie Mae with Silhouette Secrets Plus and I had several requests for the step-by-step -step instructions on how I created this mixed media journal that combines both digital aspects as well as physical mixed media aspects. I love using digital aspects because you can change the colors, you can change the sizes, you have so many options that you can reuse over and over again. So let's jump into the Silhouette Studio software and we'll take a look at how I did this. Now I measured my mixed media journal and I took those measurements, I drew a rectangle in the Silhouette Studio software and then I sized it using the scale tools in the quick access toolbar at the top. I have my base square that I'm going to use to design in, and I'm going to be using Silhouette printable vinyl. So I changed that to a letter size sheet of paper, clicked my show print border and my show cut border for the startings of my print and cut. Now I'm going to create an offset here so that when I go to do the cut, it is going to have a print bleed around it. I'm going to fill the offset with my pattern. So I am not cutting the offset. I'm going to go to the send tab, click the offset and choose no cut. So it's going to cut inside of where the color is. So I will not have white edges. Now I went back to the design tab and opened up the media library. This is a great way to look at patterns when you are working with them. So you can get a larger thumbnail rather than working with them in the patterns folder. Now I'm just selecting this. I am doing this step by step. I did not speed up this part of the video. I did cut out the areas where it was dead space. Um, but for the most part, this is step by step in my design process. Yours could be different. Designing can take time. But I selected the offset and I filled that with a pattern. Then I kind of looked for some additional elements in the library, when you do this split screen, you're able to work with both sides of library and the design process. I grabbed a little grunge border and I will put links in the description of this video for all of the supplies that I used in case you want to follow along as well. I am using digital aspects by Click Chick Designs and I love the process that we are able to do with this. I'm gonna come up here with that and turn the red cut lines off so I can see what the final image is gonna look more like. So the red can kind of be distracting your red cut lines. So I will often change the line color to transparent. Then I just kind of pulled that design out a little bit. Some designs you'll be able to do this and others you won't. It will skew it too much and it'll look a little odd. But with this one, it worked well. And then I came over to my fill color panel and I'm using the eyedropper tool to pick up a color in that background of the pattern and in the bottom of the custom color, I can darken that. So I can just pick up the colors, I can play around with them and you'll see me do that several times in this. Then I came back to my library, I'm still searching for the perfect design. So this is my entire design process. I did not have, this is not like a pre-planned video. I'm showing you my raw footage of what I was creating with. So this is the first design that I pulled in that I was looking at and trying to decide if I wanted to work with it. I double clicked on that and brought it into the software. And then of course that green stands out against my background. Now it kinda actually matches the colors but it doesn't really match in my opinion on top of that. So once I had it resized just a little bit, I turned those red cut lines to transparent. Then I played around with the color of the actual words. Black didn't look good to me, so I changed it to white. I really like the pop of the white to bring out that text. And then I just selected the offset and the text and centered that using the align tools in the quick access toolbar. And I'm just playing around to see, do I like this? To my eye, that design is actually off center in the way it was created itself. So if I did end up using this, I probably would have had to ungroup it and align that text. I did save the file. You wanna save often, especially when you're working with graphics. Now, in this case, when I went to pull a copy off, you'll notice that the pieces, the different layers, um, reorganized themselves. So the pattern was actually on top. I just selected the pattern and chose right click to choose send to back. 
Now I can come over and I'm gonna open up a file that I had previously created for another project. And I'm gonna pull that design in um, because I liked it better. And I wanted to see if it was going to work if this, and it ended up being the one that I actually chose. So I had previously typed this out in a font and I'll also link that below because I don't know off the top of my head what it is. It's a, some sort of typewriter font. I copied from the old file and pasted it into the new file. And then I just needed to rotate the design. And I'm going to do several things here. Um, the design on my previous, it's called an ATC card um, that I give out when I go to these events was all centered. In this case, I wanted everything justified to the right. So I am taking each of these individual text lines and I am justifying to the right. I'm playing around with the alignment and it would depend on the size of your journal or whatever you're working with. The page um, came back to my library and I'm going to then search for some other things. I wasn't sure if that was the final design I wanted for the statement piece on that. So I just looked up some others. I ended up choosing that I'm gonna go with this and I'm going to now come in and add some different backgrounds with the digital elements to it. So I chose this grunge urban drips um, background. It came in large, so I used the scale tools and quickly resized that down to the 50%. If I have a design that comes in quite large, I can start out by using that scale tool that is automatic from 33, 50, 100 to 200%. So it gives you a quick way to resize that. Now here I was having some issues with the software. I was clicking send to back or send backwards and it wasn't working. So what I did was I ended up opening the layers panel and you can see there when I send to back, it actually does nothing in the layers panel. Something was wrong. So I actually just grabbed that layer that it was on and drug it further down on the layers panel, which pulled it behind the text. So you can see here that even though I work with the software all the time, sometimes things do happen when you're in the software that shouldn't. Um, and so I just have to figure out what those are and I troubleshoot those as I go. I turned off the red cut lines around that grunge background and then I'm just playing around with the alignment to see what will work. This process is going to vary by user with the elements that you are using, what you are designing it for, and what your viewpoint is or what your objective is. Your um, colors that you like are going to be different than mine and that is the best part about having this digital aspect where we can pull these files into Silhouette Studio and we can adjust the sizes, we can adjust the placement, we can adjust the different colors that you see on the screen, we can align our text and if you don't like it even after it's printed out simply go back into the file that you have saved, hopefully you saved your work, and you can adjust that and recreate it. Or if you somebody says, I really like that and I'd like to make a copy, you could either send them the file or you could make more copies of this. So it's a great way to work with digital aspects in the Silhouette Studio software. Now here I am just adjusting and using the eyedropper tool in the fill color panel to try to pick up the colors. And again, this is one of those things you can just play around in the software and see this color here was just a bit too close to my um, digital grunge border on the left hand side. So I thought it blended in too much. And this process took me a little bit of time. You can see here I jumped to a different part of the design process. I went back to the text. Um, sometimes when you look at something up close, uh, you may not like it right away. You may need to step away and come back to it. And you may have a better idea when you get back to it. And so here you can see I jumped back to the text to align and to center it. And then I came back to that grunge background and started playing and adjusting with the colors again. And I did spend quite a bit of time here at the bottom of that fill color panel with the custom colors. So I want it to stand out from the background as well as from the border on the left hand side. So I just started playing around with the different colors. I used undo and I used redo just because, you know, I was changing my mind. This is the process that 
I do. And a lot of times you see what I call movie magic in that you don't see the actual process that goes into behind the scenes of putting the designs together, creating the designs. Everything looks like it gets created and done in 30 seconds, like you see in a reel. Um, that's really not realistic in the, you know, I question myself all the time. I am my own worst critic in the design process. Sometimes it'll take me forever to settle on a font. You should see some of my working files. This one's actually really, really clean. Um, and then I actually, I designed this several weeks before I ended up printing it. So I still continued to like the design when I went to finish the project and create it. So this project didn't just take hours to create the entire thing. It was something I worked on over the course of uh, a week or two weeks. I can't even remember. But I will show you photos of the finished project at the time I finished it, as well as what it looks like today, which is about five months after I finished it. So then I just came in and I set this up as a print and cut. I turned on the page marks and I left those as default. I am going to be printing on Silhouette printable vinyl and I want to print at a high quality. For my printer, I print all my specialty materials through my rear tray and I chose the glossy photo paper. I kind of had a question here on, is the Silhouette printable vinyl glossy or is it matte? I ended up going with the glossy photo paper and it turned out great. You do wanna keep in mind that the higher print quality you have and when you print for photos on a photo printer, it's going to take more ink and longer to dry. Now my printer was giving me an error. This has nothing to do with Silhouette. It's just my printer sometimes takes a little while to uh, decide that it wants to print. And when you have large graphics like this on your design file, it can take longer for it to spool. I sped that up just a little bit so you wouldn't have to watch the entire process. And then I used the Silhouette Electrostatic Mat to cut my design. Now I'm only cutting through the top layer. So you can use a Silhouette cutting mat or you can use the Electrostatic Mat. I had this out, I set it up and it was ready to go. But because I printed on it, I found that the vinyl had sort of a curl to it because of the ink on the vinyl. So I just added a few pieces of washi tape there to hold it in place on the electrostatic mat. And then it's printable vinyl cut through the top layer only. And you'll be able to see it closer up in a little bit, but it is it has that offset border, so I don't have the white edges around my design because the color is a print bleed outside of the actual cut line. So now I'll go through, and this part is time-lapsed. As you can see, I don't work that fast. Um, but I wanna give you a glimpse at how I finish this out. So this is the digital part that you see is printed on the Silhouette printable vinyl. Then I took some and I was just playing. I had no plan here. I had seen a video on the graphics channel, YouTube channel, where a mixed media artist was using paint on stamps. And I thought, why not? Let's try it and see what happens. So I just took a paintbrush, put some white acrylic craft paint on, and I just started stamping. And it turned out, I love it. I, I just have to say that. I love it. Play around with the supplies you have, see what you can add to it. Um, you do have to make sure that it's going to dry and be fully dry before you would seal it or cover it. But here I'm just playing around with some stamps, giving it a little bit of dimension and different aspects of it. And I just, I had a lot of fun creating this project and I'm glad that users wanted to know more about it and know the steps that I took to do that. Now here I'm going to take some paint and water it down. Got a little bit too much water, but I'm gonna take that. I'm just gonna flick my brush, which I moved the Silhouette machine out of the way. You wanna keep, you do not wanna get paint in your Silhouette machine. And as you can see here, you're gonna to start to see spots everywhere. It was messy, it was fun. I actually do not like to paint. I hate wait, wait, waiting for the paint to dry. I just hate it but I loved making this project. And I see more mixed media in my future. You can see I'm cleaning it up there. And then I let that dry probably a couple days before I went to the next part. Um, here's some close-up looks. This is still wet paint. 
and you can see some of the areas where I actually dabbed that with a paper towel. It gives it a little bit different look, a little bit different dimension. And there's the bottom right corner. You can see the cut line there where it's cut on the inside. Um, so it has a what they call a print bleed in the industry. Here's a look at the full. And then the next steps that I took, this is vinyl, so it is two layers. I just cut the bottom off, I didn't need it anymore. And I took my weeding hook and I started peeling the outer edges off around that cut line. And then I trimmed it down a little bit. I still want it to stay on the backing. I left it on the backing for a very specific reason. I did not wanna to have to put this on the mixed media journal and then put the laminate on top of that. So I wanted to cover the laminate, put the laminate on while it was still on the backing. And the hardest part is probably getting the backing off of this laminate. But once you get started, this is graphics laminating film. It is pretty thick. My original idea was to try to cut it with the silhouette machine and I was not successful, um, but it is very durable and that I wanted to use it on this outside cover because now I can just throw my journal into my bag. I don't have to worry about it getting scratched. I don't have to worry about the ink fading. It is um, resistant for that. And then I just slowly, um, I'm cutting the edges of that laminate off. You'll see in some of the photos, I need to go back and just kind of trim up those edges too. Um, I, I'm okay with that. Um, I can do that over time and I'm just carefully smoothing that down. And here's my detail scissors coming along. I still need to do a little bit more work on the edges of it. Um, because it's clear, it's hard to see. And, but I'm not finished yet. So I have that part of it. It is now protected. I'm gonna take some stays on ink, which is a permanent ink that can be placed on the outside edge. So now we have three different dimensions to this, maybe four, depends on how you count. Um, we have that digital mixed media aspect of it. We have the paint layer that's on top of the um, digital printout. And then we have our laminate cover, which is gonna protect it. And then we have the stays on ink that is on top of it. And I loved this um, Tim Holtz stencil that I, um, I think I bought it just for this project because I wanted to use it. Um, never hurts to have some rings or coffee stains in your stencil stash. And I just continued to kind of, you know, I just, it, there was no plan here. I had a vision in my head, which is usually how things start out. And I just kept going uh, until it was finished, which I wasn't over yet. I decided to add some little splatters on there and it turned out great. I loved being able to mix that together with the digital part of it. I have all these digital supplies that I can edit with change the sizes, change the colors. I did heat set this a little bit with the uh, heat gun and that also helps that laminate to seal there. But here's some still photos of this journal. These are immediately after it was created. I'll also link the graphics video for the graphics YouTube channel that I originally made for this. And here's a look today. These are the photos I took today about five months later. This has been in my bag with pens and pencils and different things. So it still looks fabulous. And you can still see those details on that mixed media journal. I love it, it's mine. I love creating all kinds of things with my machines and digital aspects. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.